A few weeks ago, uh, DEO was asked to supply a, a list of incentives, uh, a, a database, so to speak. And in that sheet, there was 1,600, in that spreadsheet, there were 1,622 notations of incentives. If you look at that, that was represented 1,332 projects in that spreadsheet. Uh, what, what was not provided at that time was context of how the incentive programs work, what's the objectives of the program. Uh, instead, it was just a, a, a spreadsheet with all the, everything in one lump sum that was provided with no uh, externalizing of, of, of what it means. And so again, data with no meaning, I don't see how you can make a, a valid decision based upon that. So what we want to do is give you some context to that. The point being, if you have 11 different programs with, the, with different objectives, and they don't measure up, some that require by statute job creation, some that don't, but you're totally, total them all up and looking for job creation, then it does not add up. And so what I want to do is go through the 11 programs today. I want to talk about those to give you some idea. I'm not going to go through all 11, so don't panic. I'm going to give you a context of how some of them work, what are the clawback mechanisms, what are the prevention mechanisms, what are the performance mechanisms, to give you a comfort of how they're working, and then we can talk about each one of them specifically. Now, also, before we start, I want to mention one other thing. In July, for, in July 1st, in your legislation that was passed as part of the reorganization bill, uh, the legislative body tasked Enterprise Florida with coming back and doing a three-year report on incentives project by project and gave us a deadline of December the 30th. That data is being compiled and analyzed as we speak. Uh, as I said earlier today, and uh, the people behind me from our team cringe when I said this earlier, but we're going to look and see if we can get that out quicker because I think in this context of this discussion, that will help you. So we're looking at how we can do that, but it was passed by law that we would have a three-year analysis of project by project and what we're doing, and we're working toward that. So you can look at rate of return, where the money's going, how is it being used by program. Now I want to talk specifically about programs. We have several, uh, 11 incentive programs that were in that spreadsheet. The first I'm going to talk about is the Qualified Targeted Industry Program, which we refer to as QTI. And I want to talk to you about it in the context of control mechanisms. It is a performance-based incentive. Quite simply, if a company does not create jobs, if it does not pay taxes, if it does not meet a milestone on wages, they get no incentive, period. If it's a 10-year contract, they get to year three, they have a hiccup and meet one of the milestones, the incentive stops. It's all done based on performance. QTI is a, is a great incentive, performance-based incentive program. It's targeted to certain growth clusters. It's targeted by wage uh, so that we're having higher, uh, higher performance wages. Uh, and so QTI gives us a, an ability to compete. And as I've talked to this committee to before about competition, there are the competitive projects, there are facilitated growth projects, but in the competitive project realm of, of, of activity, this is a tool that we can compete with. Now, I want to give you a little context, too, about how we compete. First and foremost, as I shared earlier today, we have a great business climate in the state, and we're continuing to enhance on that. We're going to build on it. We want to be the, uh, uh, the number one business climate in this country. We're going to continue to do that. But at the same time, as our team is selling business climate, we sell the advantages of doing business in Florida for lots of reasons. Competitive projects, when all things become equal, then incentives are often used to, in, to incent the closing of the deal. Now, personally, like you, I wish there was no such thing as incentives. But it's not realistic. We live in a world that they're going to be there. States have choices whether they want to do that. Because if it was all best based on business climate alone, this state would win hands down nine times out of 10. But we compete globally. We compete not only with 49 other states, but we compete with other countries. When we look at investment, com companies look at, do we invest in the United States? Do we invest abroad? And what states we invest in incentives have that role. QTI is an incentive that gives us an advantage that we can use based on performance to compete with other states. Uh, and, and it has worked well. Again, 
If you look at the, as I share with you, the total number of transactions at the total projects, 1,047 QTI projects in the hopper, they are confirmed to date 80,870 uh, jobs uh, based on QTI alone. Quick Action Closing Fund is another one we hear a lot of discussion about. Quick Action Closing Fund, again, is a, is a program that has clawbacks in place. When companies don't perform, we go back and ask for reimbursement to the state. And so far, this state has asked for 10 Quick Action Closing Funds that have been returned to the state. So if they don't meet their milestones, if they don't do the things that we agreed upon, we make it very clear that we're going to come back and we're going to ask for any closing fund monies used in a deal. Uh, as you can see here, the, there's 95 projects of quick action closing fund, uh, and we have today confirmed over 14,000 jobs. Now one point I want to make on here, and you're going to see this on both of these, I know one of the questions you're going to ask, well you sure do have a lot of active but not many completed. The reason is, these are long-term contracts. Quick Action Closing Fund and QTI, we're looking at sometimes eight and 10 years out. What I like about the state of Florida's incentive tools, we look for maintenance of those jobs. Once you meet the milestone, you just don't go away. We look for the maintaining of those jobs for a certain length of time. And I can tell you, some other states don't do that. I think that's a good mechanism but where it reflects differently on your spreadsheet is it will show that you have a lot of open projects. They're open because we're still monitoring from a maintenance standpoint that they maintain the jobs that they required. Again, as we work on the transaction by transaction report that we're going to provide back to you, you will see clearly from a project by project basis how that works. Innovation Fund uh, is one that uh, was created years ago and I bring this up because the objective of this one was different from the two that I just described. The first two, the Quick Action Closing Fund and the QTI, those objectives were solely job creation, period. Now, Innovation Incentive Fund, yes, the objective is job creation, but it was also used to build strategic clusters and research in the state. That was why the program was developed. It was not developed to be a competitive tool to compete with other states to compete like on closing funds or QTI, but to change the face of the state from a, a R&D uh, in cluster type of strategy. And so there are eight projects in that particular area. And you'll see the awards that are paid out, and you'll see the awards that are being held by the state because of performances that still have to be made by these eight companies. Again, you have the capacity using this to build long-term long growth in these sectors that generate a lot of other jobs around it. And that was the idea of the innovation fund. But to put them on a spreadsheet and compare total dollars, total jobs as the same as QTI or quick action closing fund, you're not going to get a combined total that measures the program accurately. And the last one that I'll uh, take a little time on and then we can go to your questions is road fund. Are road funds used for jobs, and this came up earlier today in the House Committee? A absolutely. Uh, I think it was Representative Mayfield asked us about, you know, do you track jobs on this? And we said, yes, we do. Statutorily, you don't have to. Statutorily on the road fund, uh, it's not measured by job creation. And so the thought process that is, is what I can tell from the past has been that if you build the road, you, you got to have a road to be put in place before you can employ anybody. And if the project for some reason did materialize, you do have public infrastructure that was put in place for future use. So again, is it something we should measure? Probably. Is it something we're required to? No. But if you look on that spreadsheet that was provided, there was a lot of NAs, not audited, meaning not audited jobs, because you're not required to by st statute by the compliance agency that Mr. Darling runs uh, to do that. So you would have a huge number with no job accountability that would distort the total number of investment in jobs at the end if you're totaling up all the programs. So with that said, I'll be glad to answer your questions. Again, I didn't want to, uh, you know, you can go through all of these. We can talk about them all day long. 
uh, you know, there's, there's, there's 11 different programs. Again, one that we talked about this morning that you're probably interested in too is Brownfield. You know, the objective of Brownfield is job creation, but it's also the real objective there is to go back and use uh, property that was either contaminated or blighted and put back in use so that there's revenues generated off a piece of property that otherwise could not be used in sending somebody to use that program, uh, use that project, uh, use that property through this program. So uh, with that, I hope that uh, gives you some context of how, the, how these are being used. I can tell you, uh, as I said earlier, I'll be glad to answer the questions. That I know there was, uh, there was questions about uh, payout in uh, closing funds uh, versus companies, are they creating the jobs? Uh, one of the things in closing funds, as I mentioned, there's escrow funds. If they're, that, that, when when, when o, uh, then OTED showed paid out, and a lot of times in that spreadsheet, that means it was paid out but being held in escrow by Enterprise Florida based on performance. So again, we're not really adding up our columns so that you can clearly have an accurate picture, and, and we will correct that. Uh, but uh, I wanted to give you the context of that. So Madam Chair, that's a, a quick report in the late afternoon, and I'll be glad to answer any questions of your committee.